viewers and welcome to another video to this week's video it's probably going to be another short one because we're dealing with uh, older footage footage that was uh, taken by Jamie while I was off during the birth of our first child Edward so we've got this footage to look at but we're obviously not in front of the item so we're limited to what we can do but we're going to look at two more objects this week talk about them and see uh, how Jamie did at the auction at the last sale when I was uh, away so paternity leave is pretty much over and I'm back into the swing of things at work again. So I'm kind of combating that lack of sleep and then hard eight hours uh, at work getting the sale ready. Uh, this next weekend sale is uh, almost done now. It's looking like another big beefy sale, somewhere between six or 700 lots. But um, by the time you view this video, it'll actually be online with the sale following on Monday. So uh, you should go and check that out website is pbauctioneers.co.uk and you can look at the uh, catalogue over there and some items in that sale will be viewed on this channel in the next couple of videos so anyway let's dig in and have a look at the two lots so the first lot this week jamie's selection is for this brass telescope it's world war one period and it's what's known as a three draw telescope so there's three sections that pull out three draws if you like so the smallest one the one of the lowest diameter the one nearest the eyepiece has actually stamped there T, T and H. And that stands for Taylor, Taylor and Hobson. And they are an outfit that operated out of Leicester. This telescope's also clad in nice tan leather. And it's still got the case for the additional lens. There's a low and a high lens. Each one of those has a different magnification for seeing different lengths, uh, different distances, should I say. So as we've mentioned, these telescopes by TT and H, they were, they were World War I telescopes and they were actually issued to World War I sniper teams. So that's, that's quite exciting, obviously it's uh, World War I, any World War, such a, such a dark time and, and the thought of what a sniper team's for is, is quite sinister. But um, they're always, I mean snipers are something that obviously there's a great deal of fascination about the uh, you know the discipline and um, the patience required and not not to mention the the incredible skill that would have been required to be a sniper but um, as I've always said when I'm handling objects within uh, our field I always think about the life that this piece has had and there's, there's nothing more chilling but fascinating about items that have been through uh, been through war campaigns and, and this if you can imagine you can actually hold this up and, and look through it you're looking through the same optics that somebody would have been doing through this uh, war campaign and what might they have seen they'll have been you know looking at um, this sniper team will have been spotting out there to see which um, to see German soldiers obviously that, that would have met their end but at the hand of this sniper so quite scary stuff but anyway getting into the telescope and it feels like really great quality it's good heavy gauge brass the leather's beautiful quality and that's protected the brass from scratches etc the leather is a little bit worn um, but the optics the glass optics they're in great condition no no chips and no cracks so anyway we got a catalogue estimate of 60 to 80 pounds so let's see how it gets on in the auction before we actually get started i just want to point out the auctioneer view screen i've showed you that before it's just up there that shows the laptop what Jamie and I are looking at when we're auctioneering. It relays the internet bids to us. So if you're bidding from home, it flashes up to us so we can see your bid. Now normally the internet, it doesn't really wait its turn. It just barges in there. It's quite rude and just flashes up bids. But this one, for some reason, I think whoever, whoever was on the other end of this was just a bit more patient and was actually following the auction, watching the live feed, listening to um, the audio and was bidding in sequence. So it, it's they're participating quite well and it's it's probably it's, it's good to watch so you can see how that clicks in with what we're doing but uh, anyway let's uh, let's roll the auction uh, lot 122 is the World War one uh, leather cased brass free draw telescope uh, TT and H limited 1917 so somebody's way high and see. low lenses uh, lot 122 internet starts us at 60 fives bid online. 70 in the room and 5, bidding at 75, 80, 5, 90, seated at 85, looking for 90 now, in the room at 85, 90 I need, 90 online and 5, 100, still with the room at 95, I'm looking for 100, are you all through, it's at 95 then, 100's bid online, 110, internet's taking it at 100, I need 110 elsewhere, 
with the sale room at £100. All done. It's at 100 and selling. So you can see that person there was, was bidding. They were really sort of taking their time. They were sort of very measured. And it reminds me when I'm sort of, when I'm bidding on things online, they're always for, for me to keep at home. So I'm always very, very thoughtful about how much I bid and, and whether I should bid or not. And that sort of reflected in the way that person was bidding, just very, very careful. So I, I like to, to see that. But yeah, estimate 60 to 80 fell at hundred pounds. So above estimate there, so it's a, a really good start. So object two of this week's video, what Jamie selected is for a Georgian chest of drawers. So we're getting back into furniture. As we've talked about lots, and as I'm sure you're aware, uh, the antique furniture market is particularly not very strong. But some pieces do stand out, uh, some certain objects are, are still hotly contested, and quality will always speak when it comes to value. But yeah, this is for a, a Georgian mahogany chest, so it's, it's a good 200 years old. And this one in particular, I think is a very nice example. It's got good stout proportions. It is just straight fronted, so it's, it's not over fancy. There is a bit of incised line beading, which is nice. It's got those lovely uh, cast bronze drop handles, nice straight uh, bracket feet. Uh, but the color is really marvelous. It's, it's an original color, original polish. Uh, it's got that good, rich um, color to it. The top is quite heavily marked and I kind of like that that's not been messed about with it. It's not been sanded out and repolished so you can really see the age and the life of this piece so you can really imagine what that's that's gone through and I like to see that. It's got a good patina so in the, all those nooks and crannies it's quite dark so somebody's gone to the lengths over the years of polishing it but obviously you can't get into those so it builds up dirt and that's what's known as patina and you really can't fake that. So we went with a catalogue estimate of 100 to 180 pounds and for a chest of drawers if, if you look what you could buy in say Ikea or one of those sorts of places for that sort of money really not going to get that sort of quality you'll get something very light filled with sort of uh, cardboard honeycomb something that will only last a few years this has lasted a couple of centuries and will outlast all of us if, if it's looked after and it's as we've said it's got amazing uh, character so if you're out there looking for furniture for your house and you like the look of antiques I don't know why you buy anything else I mean the quality is just superb so 100 280 let's see if we got there uh, 596 is the Georgian mahogany chest of two over three graduated uh, drawers and commission starts us at uh, 130 looking for 140. 130, 140, 150 looking for 160. The bid's at 150, take 160. All through with it, it's at 150 then, 150 and selling. 150 pounds then, mid estimate and some lucky commission bidder has got himself a great looking chest of drawers. So video 33 is over, thanks again for coming and watching. Now the next video, I should have hopefully got a bit more accustomed to this lack of sleep and being able to function in the world of work. Uh, I'll be at the viewing, so hopefully I'll be able to bring you some footage a little bit more akin to what we're, what we're used to on this channel. Uh, if you uh, are a regular subscriber, thanks for coming and, and watching. If it's the first time you've seen this channel or you've just seen a few videos, I do urge you please subscribe. It's absolutely free. You can unsubscribe at any time. You just click the big red button below this video window. Also, if you click the notification bell just next to it, you'll be notified any time a new video is uploaded. Also, if you thought this was good, uh, leave a like on the video and I'll see you all in seven days. So have a wonderful week.